Hey, what's up guys? In this lesson, we're gonna be going over our master tempo automation and why it's important to automate our master tempo. So when I talk about master tempo, I'm talking about the number up here in the top left. This is what is guiding all of our tracks. That's what the ruler is based on. And so we wanna set up our song so that one bar of our backing tracks is the equivalent of one bar in Ableton Live. So right now uh, it defaults to 120. And if we zoom in here on our click track, our click doesn't line up with it. It's actually funny, it sort of lines up because technically the tempo of the song we're using is 160. So because 120 is three quarters of that, it actually lines up on every third beat. But essentially what we would want it to look like if I click and drag this up to 160, uh, whoa, there we go. That's how we want it to line up, where there's one click for every single quarter note, four per bar. Um, so anyways, we're gonna go back to 120. You can just manually input and hit enter too, that works too, or click and drag. Um, so in order to find the tempo for our song, if you don't know what the tempo is, we have a tap tempo up here. If you just start clicking along, it'll tap along to the song and it'll give you the number, it'll change this number based on how fast you're tapping. Um, I'm not a big fan of this tap tempo specifically because it doesn't give you an average. So something I really like to use, I'm going to head over to my web browser here and show you my favorite metronome. Where is it here? Um, bestmetronome.com. If you just Google best metronome, this is what pops up. We have a tap tempo function here. We just click on that. If I start hitting space bar, it gives me my last speed. It gives me an average of five. And if I keep going, it gives me an average of 20. So if I pull up this track, I'm just gonna hit play and I'm gonna tap along and find the tempo. So right here we see it jumping all the way around. But once I lock into a good speed, you can see it's staying right at 160 pretty much. So that gives you a good average to know, know that that's the tempo rather than 161, 162. Um, so, and then just to test it now that I think it's 160, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna play the song back. I'm gonna set our metronome to 160. I'm gonna select 160 here, hit start right on one of the beats and make sure it lines up. Yeah. So, okay, so now that we know our tempo is 160, we're going to automate our master tempo here. So it changes from song to song. What we could do, um, some people are, you're probably, you're probably saying, why don't you just grab this and turn it to 160 and then just leave it at that. Problem being, the next song we put in to our Ableton session, um, here, let me fix that. Um, here, I'm gonna zoom out. So once we get this song all set up, what we're gonna wanna do is put another song back here and start another song. So like this, our second song in the set or our third song in the set. And so if that song isn't at 160, then we have a problem because the tempo of our backing tracks are gonna change, but it's not gonna change up here. So in order to fix that, we need to automate this so it changes from song to song. So if we open up our master, our master track down here, um, it defaults this automation lane here, this red line defaults to our song tempo. So right, so if I grab this and I start dragging this up and down, you can see this red line going up and down. And essentially, that's just showing you the tempo of the song. So in order to automate it, what we got to do, I'm going to zoom in at the beginning here, and I'm just going to drop, uh, we can draw points in. So if I go along this red line, I can draw points in and do this if I want to. Um, problem being, I can't really get uh, exactly on 160. I can get 160.6, but that doesn't help because eventually my track's going to drift off. So in order to get 160 exactly, um, I'm just going to undo a few of those lines. I'm going to drop in one point, And what that does is if you go to the top here, you see this red dot. That means... Our tempo is now reading the automation we've done. If I eliminate that last dot and undo it, we lose our red dot up here. But as soon as I put one in, 
now we know that our automation, our song tempo is looking for automation. So what we're going to do is go to the very first bar and we're going to record automation into it. So if you're not clicked on the first bar, what you can just do is hit the hit the stop button twice and it automatically takes you to bar one, beat one. So we're going to go here. We're going to go up here, type in 160, hit enter. And now we are going to hit record. And we're just going to let this record for a few bars. We don't need to go through the whole song. You can just let this run all the way through the whole song, but that's going to take three or four minutes. I don't really want to do that. So we've just recorded. So now we have a change here. So if we, if I play back from here, for instance, and you can see up here it says 160, as soon as it gets here, it's going to drop back down to what our original tempo was. And that just means the, the lines, this ruler that in, in the background where our bar lines are is changing from 160 to 120. So we want the whole song to be 160. So now we've done the very beginning of the song. We're going to do the very end of the song. Um, don't worry, this is all going to make sense in a minute here. Um, we can even go a bit further past if we want to, just in case we decide we want to extend the song a little bit. Might as well go a little bit past. I'm going to select right here. Um, I'm just going to make a, a selection here and I'm going to go back up here. So it's giving me 120 again here. I'm going to input 160 again, hit enter and hit record again. And as we can see, it's recording up at 160 here. So we're just going to record a small segment just like that. And then we're going to delete these points in here. So there's two different ways we can do that. We can just double click on them or we can option click. If we hold option and click, it deletes it. So then we're going to scroll all the way back to the front. We're going to delete these couple. And now what we have, if we zoom out, is we have automation, a perfectly straight line. It's 160 all the way across the song. Actually, for some reason, oh, um, okay. I didn't capture the, la the very end of the song. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom back out here. I'm going to go to the very end. It's already dropped back down to 160. I'm going to put 160 in. Hey, look at that. I'm getting text messages from Batman. What's up? That's my older brother. Um, that was a hilarious practical joke from years ago. Anyways, you guys aren't paying me to talk about Batman, are you? Okay, back to Ableton. So I'm going to put in 160 again, hit enter, record. I'm just going to get a small segment here. I'm going to go delete these. And now our entire track is at 160. So if I zoom in on the very first bar, we're going to see our click track lines up perfectly. One, two, three, four, one, two. Okay. And let's just make sure we got that the same all the way through. So I'm going to just keep scrolling, keep scrolling. That's where our drums come. We can see the drums are right on beat there. Everything lines up with the grid. Shouldn't go off at any point. If there is, that means we've done the automation wrong. Um, everything's looking good here. So and let's just go make sure the very last very end of the songs on perfect okay so that's how we automate our master tempo and now everything about this track is in time what we want to do next time once we drop another track in which we can do this in a further lesson too i'm going to do this again um, is we're going to drop another track in and then adjust this type in the new tempo and make an adjustment so it goes from 160 to say the next song is 112 and then so we're going to punch in 112 here and record the beginning and end, delete the points, and have all of the second song on the grid. Cool. Thanks, guys.